All right, so this is the inaugural meeting of the Public Safety and Highway Facility Needs Assessment Feasibility Committee. So named. It's being called to order at 9.03 in the a.m. on Wednesday, December 22nd. First order of business is to organize the committee. Open the floor for nominations to chair. I'll nominate Mike. Mike Fitzpatrick. There you go. <laughs> Second. I get, I get the chance. <clears throat> Are there any other nominations? <laughs> Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Going three times. The temporary chair notes the absence of opposition. Mr. Fitzpatrick is the chairman. You're going to need a vice and a vice, that's all. I am thinking. So, um, considering the group that we have here, I think it may make sense to have Matt Benoit as the vice chairman where he's not affiliated with the three departments that we're actually discussing. Second. Third. We have a second and a third. <laughs> do you want to vote on that or are you going to accept that as is? You're the chair now. That's okay, well, we I didn't know if you, if you officially handed over the uh, staff. So um, we have a second and a, uh, a motion and a second and a third. Any discussions? If not, uh, need a vote on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Doesn't look like anybody's opposed, so Matt, you're uh, oh, involved in this. So the, yeah, if you don't want to take this thing off, I can't talk with it, it's kind of choking me. Um, <clears throat> I initially mentioned this um, at one of our meetings to organize this group uh, for the sole purpose just to identify the needs of all three departments, fire, highway, and police. Um, it's no secret that all three departments are struggling in, in different ways um, within their own department. So the goal in here, uh, from my standpoint, and everybody else can feel free to share their, their opinion as well, is to just identify what your actual needs are, not only today, but moving forward in the future to hold us off for the next hopefully 20 to 30 years. Um, we don't want to all be embarrassed and come back in five years and say we need something uh, to correct the situation. I know that Highway, uh, only because I've had some communication with Adam, that they've started looking around at different things. Um, I've heard that um, the fire as well has um, explored some of the things that they need and I would hope that I haven't had any conversation with the police department, I would hope that they have done the same. Um, I don't want to necessarily get into immediately saying, is it one building, three buildings, two buildings, or whatever. I think it's more important to identify the needs of what each department needs um, for, for personnel, for equipment, uh, meeting rooms, whatever it is that you, that you people need. Um, and I also ask that Matt Benoit would be involved in it where he's the town planner and he would have a good insight as a utilate, utilization of space on, on the land, um, whether we have any constraints for uh, whether it's the watershed district or whatever the case may be. So probably uh, it would make sense and send Ken's to my left for no other reason, but we'll go, we can go department by department. Um, if you want to start off, Kent, with uh, what your thoughts are as to if you have any information that you want to start with. Well, I guess basically uh, you just go with, you know, the state that the, the history of the building we're presently was, uh, Built in 2000, it was dedicated in 2000. It's a building with two mezzanines for living quarters. Um, again, originally built for a call fire department, and yet, uh, let's see, 
we actually occupied the building with full timers before we even dedicated it. <laughs> so anyway, so it's uh, right now it's a 24/7 structure that um, we have people in 24/7. There's no sprinkler system there. Uh, there's no AC. The generator is really undersized. It's not well insulated. Um, we don't have any security access really to speak of. Um, and the fact that we have narcotics and ambulances and have to control those, um, that should probably be something we look at. Uh, we added a bunch of things, computer equipment. We didn't. We went to Walmart and got the first computer when we, we were there. Um, Do you want we added a diesel extraction. Do you want the list? Climb event, yeah, sure. Radio equipment. Um, this. Yeah, just excuse me for a minute, Chief. Yep. What I'm going to do is, because Kelly's sitting on the, on the opposite side of the table, um, I'll also ask her for her input mm -hmm. as well. If you if you're doing it, that's together, fine. Whatever. Same thing with Mark and Mark and the uh, police chief. Um, because they're separated. It's easy yep. with you two because you're sitting next to each other. <clears throat> I have a PowerPoint too. I don't know if you want to put that up of some of the things that he's talking about. Right. I didn't know what, what how we were going to be presenting yeah, it. Yeah, so. it's kind of, we're trying, trying to get our thoughts together to get a plan as to how to move forward. So um, I can have him throw it up while he's chatting if you would like. Yep. What I don't want to do on this first meeting is make it so that each department has an hour and a half of, of time of, I get of, it. of putting stuff together. Trying to, and this is my thought, and again, open to everybody's opinion, is to just have this formal meeting and then everybody has the charge of what they're gonna do moving forward. Um, how you're gonna identify what your needs are and stuff like that and come together with a better plan. Because after we're done with this, and hopefully we only have to do this four to six meetings or something. I think it'll go pretty quick. It goes from us to the, to the building and facilities. We're kind of, it should have went directly to them. I kind of pulled it back because I wanted to have a more organized approach to, to how we went there so you're not sitting there trying to fight back and forth with a committee that not necessarily has good insight as to what you immediate needs would be on the building. So if we hand them something <coughs> that it's a little more put together, it'll make their job a lot easier. And then it'll go from them, and then I believe it goes to the selectmen before it would go to town meeting, correct? So what I have said, Matt, when you went out is um, the goal of this committee is to try to organize our needs and stuff like that, but after it leaves us, it's um, hopefully in the next four to six meetings front of the building and facilities. That it was going to go that way. But then it also goes to capital. Oh, uh, capital, yeah. Before it gets to the capital. Yeah. And, and again, Kelly, if you have a lot of your work done, you have your, a lot of your work done, which is fine. It's just going to expedite the process. I just in fairness to everybody's time on, on this committee. I don't know of what everybody's got allotted this morning. So. Well, I can probably be done in five minutes. Okay, you got part. three left. You already used okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the history is uh, computer work. We put in a diesel uh, extraction system for the exhaust, mm -hmm. radio equipment, um, portable AC units to try to cool the area. <clears throat> We did put a turnout gear extractor, washer dryer, and another washer dryer for gear when um, sheets and towels and stuff like that yeah. for when COVID hit. We have some heating and cooling issues with the HVAC boiler, um, and, and the boiler has uh, never been from day one a very good one. You know we have roof issues. Mm -hmm. We need to get squared away. We have window issues. Um, I've got a couple of pictures here of some, some of the boiler room and stuff. Um, and the electronic issues, the, the door access keys. Um, and then you know that we got hit by lightnings. We have a bunch of cur currently uh, some electrical issues and we're trying to 
put a new generator in to cover some of that stuff. But, um, <clears throat> that's really about all I have for the, for the uh, you know, we had to add surge protection and stuff because we just have a lot of sensitive equipment, cardiac monitors and things like that. And if you have a brownout or a generator that's not clean power, it can damage equipment, which we have done. Um, and that's really about it as far as us. But we have space issues as well. Um, we've got another truck coming soon with the rough truck. So that's really all I have, unless you have anything else to add. Yeah, we store um, a host of equipment down at the Cottage Street station, so two forestry takers. Um, our dive boat, one of our dive boats has to be stored at a marina in the winter because we don't have space. We store a lot of equipment outside, a dive trailer, our UTV trailer. Um, the forestry tankers are stored outside in the summer. The CERT and the EMD supplies are stored outside. Um, in terms of office space, it's not adequate. Um, one of the sleeping areas is being used as a dual office space for the EMS coordinator and um, another lieutenant who holds a specialty role. There's no desk for the fire training officer. The other desk for the officer in charge is in our day room. Um, other supplies are jammed in various places throughout the building. It's difficult to walk around trucks. Um, and then we have no space to store files or storage or anything like that. Our gym is very cramped. Um, the dive equipment and the dive boats are t stored in two separate areas and we only have, it has nothing to do with the building, but um, we only have the ability to pull one trailer at a time. So trying to get all the pieces, if we had a water rescued, they're not stored together. So that's just a general <laughs> overview of our issues yep. with storage. Yep. So that's all really good information. So what we, what we need to move forward with it is identifying what the space need is for that. So uh, like uh, with your dive equipment, I need a 10 by 10 space. I need um, three bunk rooms. I need whatever it I'm is. I'm just going by the first item on the list to document the space utilization of our present department. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. I'm just trying to help you. So all, all this is good information, but as we move forward, what we're trying to do is identify actual space needs so we can decide um, what size, what size building space you need? The fire department, and I mean the uh, police department as well as the uh, highway. Well, our, our four truck bays is 2,900 square feet. I would tell you that we would at least need to double that, and that doesn't include the okay. single bays that were. Yep, yep. Let me explain it a different way. 2,900 square feet could be 290 feet long and 10 feet wide. I need to know, or uh, people moving forward past me, because I, obviously I could figure it out quick enough if I needed to. How big is your truck? How much space you want to walk around and things like that. You gotta figure out that kind of space utilization of what you're gonna need. And that'll it'll just be helpful for you as well as um, when we present and move this forward to the next committee so they know what you need for space. They will not know what 2,900 square feet. So I'll tell you right now, 100 by 116, that would double the footprint of what we have, and that would be the current configuration to get truck bays, to get everything, all those items I talked about that are stored inside. Um, so if you had 100 by 115, that would, that would satisfy every need that you have? Um, to get what we currently own under one roof, yes. I don't know what the budget of the project's gonna be. I, Forget, forget about the budget of the project. You, you're missing one, and I'm not trying to give you a hard time, Kelly. I'm trying to help you. Um, Anybody who talks about money, you're going to go into timeout. Right. <coughs> yeah. Uh, we need, I'm going to stop that immediately data too. Data-driven. Yeah. How big is the piece of equipment? What would a standard parking spot be? Would all our stuff fit in the parking spot? <coughs> How many doors that open immediately to the outside? you want to have those kinds of considerations because John can store a lot of equipment and have only one or two, one or two doors because <clears throat> he's not going to scramble everything all at once but you might need to get everything out quickly yeah. 
so we can't be moving stuff around so that you can get the thing that's in the back to go get to the door. Those are the kinds of really basic kindness. We'll just take it all the way down like six notches and just start off with where is the stuff? How much room does it have? And how, how are we storing it now? I mean, I, <clears throat> a lot of people in this room have been to Cottage Street, and you are probably the grand total of everyone, other than Oktoberfest, that's actually been here. Mm -hmm. Who else in town has ever had a reason to move? Yeah, not many. <clears throat> Could you slide that one microphone back over to that table? Sorry about that much. Yeah. yeah, so anyways, and then um, Matt helped me with that a little bit. It's just trying to figure out how, how your space is going to work. Because if you just say 100 by 115, um, it, I don't know what that means. And, I, and this is what I do every single day. So I don't know, do you need one overhead door? Do you need 12 overhead doors? Uh, is, is it both sides of the building? Is trying to figure out how that space is. Once we know that you need um, six bays that are going to be 10 feet wide, 30 feet long, you don't have to worry about the configuration of it. We need to know what the what you need for different space. So I need a space for the uh, ladder truck that's going to be 12 feet by 35 feet long, and I need an overhead door. That's that's what's going to be helpful for whoever, because all this stuff's going to get handed off to an architect. Though the whole purpose of putting this together is we're not spending ninety or a hundred thousand dollars to have somebody come in, hand you a bunch of stuff, and say, "This is what you need." That's not going to work. Um, that's I can have a basic idea of how I think it should go, but ultimately, an architect would really be able to give me the information of how the building should be configured to to house. The amount of stuff or what I have to do. So I yep, there's no argument there, and that's exactly what I do. You know, what I what I mean is, once you, if I'm going to build something for you, I'm going to say, all right, what is it that you need? You you're going to tell me, and then I'm going to turn around and take that and and put it on a plan and say it'll work like this. Well, what if we put it over here? Well, it won't work like that because you already did your homework and you know what your basic need is. The architect has no idea. He's just going to go in his portfolio and say, does this work? No, that doesn't work. How about this one over here? That's not productive. So you want us to conceptually come up with something? Nope. Nope. All I okay. want you yeah, so bring it right down to real simple terms. If, if Let me use your, your own house for argument's sake, okay? I have two vehicles. I need a two-car garage. I have three kids, so I need three bedrooms, and I need one for myself. And I like to have, I got one girl and two boys, and so I need two bathrooms up there because they can't share once they get to be teenagers, and I want a bathroom for myself. Then I can start turning around and putting a plan together that works for you, and that's what the architect's going to need. So you just really simple terms. It's like you talk about the search trailers and, and these other things, how are those going to be stored and utilized? Can you take one bay and, and put the search trailer in and put another one in and put another one in? Yeah, so. And then you have to pull them all out? Or I could explain to you right now why I just came up with that mm -hmm. term of doubling our square footage in that yep. particular fashion based on the way we're currently storing things out of, we have in Cottage Street um, where we could stack up a couple of trailers, stack up a couple of dive boats, and then have the two forestry takers mm -hmm. um, in another two bays, which would be another four bays, which is basically doubling what we're currently doing. And I'm right. not saying yep. that's the ideal configuration, but what I'm saying is that's a way, a, a conceptual, simple idea in my head in terms of we basically need to double the square footage of what we have Yep. To so, store everything but, under one roof right so now. What you're you, already compromising. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Yeah, but let me do one thing and then you can have it. You just told me what I wanted to hear. You just you said double the space, but you also said I need four more bays. And that's exactly, I don't care about the amount of space. You just told me I needed four more bays. That's what I need to know. And that's what the architect's going to need to know. So it, don't think in terms of how much the gross area is. Think in, in terms of all right, we have this one truck, where's it going? 
I need a bay for that X amount of space and I need a door to get out. And this truck and this truck and this and this trailer and this ambulance and storage for the medical equipment or, or whatever. Sorry, Matt, uh, hopefully you retained your thought. No, I just, <clears throat> I know it's hard for this group because you may do with so little for so long. <laughs> and nobody can promise you that we can build you, build you your ideal setting. And we can say that. <clears throat> but if we don't start with that, then we're going to, we were starting from a compromised position and we'll just keep whittling it down until it will suck as bad as we have now. So what I'm looking for you to do is take your mission and mission critical elements and say, my building design and my building needs are going to reflect how I want to operate with that piece of equipment. So, you know, the kid's drowning at Wallam Lake. Oh, let's go dig out the boat. By the time we dig out the boat, the kid's dead. So, just being yeah. hyper exaggerated for a second. So if you think, well, we want the dipole to be something that we back up to and pull out and an emergency lights on and off you go because you're not gonna waste any time setting it up, then that has to be a thing. CERT is a great example because CERT, we, we will always have advance notice of something, we, pretty much always, of what we would use the generators and other stuff in the CERT trailer. So that can be stuck in the back of a building or even in its own little shed and doesn't need to be in front of a, a electronic, I mean, a, the door, overhead that, door. The door yeah. with an overhead door. <clears throat> See where we're going with this? No, I know exactly Every, where you're going. <clears throat> because it, the, then the next set of questions will be, well, you, the stuff you guys drive is really heavy. Some of your stuff is really heavy. We can't just put that on any old slab, now can we? Hmm. Right, so the, the, uh, there are all those structural considerations. I don't want to interrupt anymore, but <clears throat> this is a, not an easy exercise if you haven't done it before. Because you have to think outside of your current context. Just say where the stuff is and then how you plan to use it. Um, I mean, we can think. Again, contrasting with highway, where there are some of your trucks you only drive in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So that can be stored in the back, doesn't need to run right out. Yeah. That's how they've got, gotten away with what they're doing for so long. It's the only way at your building works. Right? Oh. Okay, yeah. I've said enough. The stack three deep. Yep. <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, I'm just trying to be helpful for you, Kelly, not trying to uh, distract you from it, but I'm, I'm thinking from a builder's standpoint what I'm going to need from you in order to build it. And the architect's going to think the same way. Is he's, you're going to have to tell him what your needs are, um, how many overhead doors you're going to need, how many bunk rooms you're going to need, how many, uh, whether you have male, female, or unisex bathrooms, what, whatever it is, you, you need to make a list of that stuff and then that's how they're going to come up with their design yeah no I'm, i i get what you're saying i have a list of my staff right here in terms yep. of male female full-time um there's a you know I, I made notes on the paper uh in terms of how many sleeping positions we have and yep. um whether you have males or females working how many you would ideally need to have um, I can I can have that conversation with you right now but it sounds like you just want a quick overview so I think I think we're good. Yeah, that's it, what you're looking for. We we yeah. I mean, that. Try, so on this initial meeting, just just so we, um, I don't offend anybody or, or or push them away or whatever, is to put us all together to get to get the mentality of how we want to move forward sure. with it. So you just brought up something that was interesting. Is the you have your whole list of male and female members and stuff. Matt, can you explain what happened in Plainville with the uh, fire station? Uh, well, I think it might have been the police station. Oh, uh, police station. <clears throat> well, somebody's transitioning, and they don't have a facility to handle that for a locker room. So it was the police chief, because <clears throat> when I spoke to him, he's like, my entire staff was male. They just built a brand new building, the locker room, they have one locker room. Now you have somebody transitioning. So there's just, a whole just conversation a we have to have through the MCAT about discrimination and all this rest of it. And the attorney on the webinar was suggested, well, just build another, you know. And the guy's like, no, I just finished the building. I'm not going to add a $25,000 addition or whatever the heck it was for a bathroom and a locker room. <clears throat> so in the society we live in today, when we think about these facilities in the building, we might want to think about them differently. We might not want to put a label on the door. You just might want to have a lock and have everything inside there, a locker as well as a shower and 
All unisex, pretty much. All unisex, right. and then whoever gets it first locks the door and first come, first serve. Yeah. You have to teach some people some etiquette, I guess. And that's the healthy part of this group, is, is <coughs> you'll bring different information that will be helpful for these guys. Um, Matt learned of that situation, which is helpful for everyone. You just, if you're not used to thinking that way, you just, oh, maybe you considered that. Uh, Could I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Just absolutely. For clarification. When we talk about the equipment, are we going to talk just about the equipment we have, presently have? Because I'm maybe. thinking ladder truck down the line, maybe tower, whatever. Um, so this just, is where the, just, the marriage has to occur with this build out analysis. <laughs> right. So not just bedroom population, but people who work here during the day population. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is your max peak? Right. Because your business and Chief Miglianico's business, you typically have people who do analysis on the number of calls that are run per capita mm -hmm. over time. So you're going to want to size that. Your need for a tower versus other things will be driven by the size of the buildings that you have to reach. We all know what's going on with that stuff right now and what's available through mutual aid. So. The only thing you guys didn't mention, that you have to upgrade your service. So the generator sucks, but really, you're browning out all the time, so there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This building's going from 400 amps to at least 600, but we're talking about, I think it's 800, so that you have room to grow. But in terms of how we talk to taxpayers about that, it basically rewiring the whole fire station. You don't have enough receptacles for all that. That's, somebody's got to wire the building so that you can actually plug the stuff in in a safe place. So there's going to be a lot of design by the electrical engineer. Mm. And that and <clears throat> I am going to have Dave and Aglia come to one of these meetings, but you tell us, tell everybody, tell the recording if some people will watch this in the future, how you have your computer room set up. Because that's some of your most expensive, most sensitive equipment. And right now, it's in the room closet. I get agreed. Is it physically secure? No. So it's not locked. How uh, I've been approached by different people in the public asking about <laughs> um, this committee and what we're doing and stuff like that. And they have asked about the fire department. And the way I explained it to them, I said, so they could put their head around it. I said, basically what we did 20, 21 years ago was built a com commercial shell and finished it with residential stuff. It's just, it, it's not <laughs> properly done. It's just, it was, it was um, done, and I'm sure at the time they, there was good intentions. They tried to save funds and all this other stuff. Um, historically, that's what we do in town. That's why we're all sitting here now trying to figure out how to fix the three major departments in town um, moving forward. But that's the long and the short of it. It's just the building was built inadequately. It, and we it came wasn't, out of Cottage it, Street and mm. thought it was the best ever. Right. You know? That's exactly why, because yeah. we're in the same situation. We need <clears throat> two rooms above the post office. Yeah. Two rooms above the post office coming into this building all brand new and spiffed up downstairs. You're in heaven. It was like going to the Taj Mahal for these guys. It was night and day. Same thing with these guys. They're going from Cottage Street to a brand new building. You look it up at it on the outside, and it's like when, I, when you guys first built that, we yep. were like, oh, that's beautiful. You know, and yep. the police department said, well, we wish we could get something like that right up by, by where they were, right? Mm -hmm. And historically, that's what it's been. Yeah, and, and the town's grown to the point where we need to do something with it. So now um, that recent press conference, uh, the, the governor came out and they, and, and they did the announcement and there's a potential of 800 full-time positions being created just in those two buildings, not even considering the one in our neighboring town, which is a pretty significant building. They're not all going to come from Douglas, but it could increase our population by 10% in the next 24 months. Now what? So we have a bad situation now that got even worse. We need to address
address all these things. So anyway, we're getting a little off track. That's more for the benefit of anybody that decides to watch this tape. Um, but getting back to what we're doing, it's if we start off with figuring out what we need for space for personnel and equipment, that's going to be a good baseline. We've got to start with a baseline. We start with what we need and then we can add to what we want or what we project the future is going to bring. So there's, um, as we get into it, if is, I've already thought a lot about this because of what I do every single day. If any one of the departments want to know what I'm thinking, I'm more than happy to share that, but I don't want to do that. I want you guys to figure out your stuff first. Wait until you, you have a problem before I even, I don't want to, my thoughts to, to contaminate what your thinking process is. So, um, if you don't mind, Kelly, I, I, are you satisfied with what the direction that I'm um, thinking that we should go into? Uh, the next meeting, we get a lot more time. Um, and we may have to, if you feel that it's going to take an hour for your presentation and the chief uh, feels it's going to take an hour for his and an hour for a highway, we may split it up and say, you know, the next meeting we're going to talk about fire and then the, the following meeting we'll talk about highway and the third meeting we'll talk about the police just so we, because we have to respect everybody's position. They can't just sit in this room all day long. Uh, no, no, they do, I get they it. do have work to do, so that may be a good way for us to approach this moving forward. So if that makes sense to everybody, I would like to entertain that. Sure. Yep. You good with that? Yep. Yep. Um, do you have anything else you want to add now, Kelly, because I just want to move around the table. Oh, I'm all set. You're, you're good. Um, just in rotation, I'm going to go to highway next. Yeah, so our, our building built in 1931, the addition in the back, the back three bays were built in the 70s, they tell me. It was a used building they brought here and assembled, poured a pad and just You would have never up. known. I'm sorry? You would have never known. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> undersized for our equipment, obviously, with everything that's parked outside, um, no ventilation system. Um, we don't meet a lot of requirements with the MS4 stuff, so um, we may be a little further ahead than the other two departments because we, we've been trying for a little bit now, so we've done a lot of homework already mm -hmm. by visiting other towns and what have you. So I'm going to let Adam read off of um, the, the five bullet points, um, yep. what, we've, what we've worked on and what, how we've got to this point now. So since we did go visit other departments, I actually kind of uh, started talking to Weston and Sampson, an engineer who did um, some work for another facility that we visited. And he was graciously enough to ask me for all our equipment, our sizes, that's this whole sheet here, every piece yep. of equipment we have, what the sizes are. He put them in, they have a formula that they do in, to give you the square footage. And the square footage for our current equipment should be 22,952. Our current square footage is 4,324. Yeah. Um, we went through it all with different floor plans, which I have here from different buildings, you know, and we were looking at two doors, you know, maybe 14 foot doors, probably about 20 bays, 20 spots. You know, pull into the right for 10, pull into the left for 10. One right down the middle is going to be just a drive, you know, drive through basically. Keep our equipment inside. Um, we have equipment stored everywhere. So uh, we were pretty much um, on that track. Ventilation system, a wash bay, a mechanics bay. That would get us where we are now. Now, if we want to expand, which is what we were all discussing, which is one of the other ones, you know, you may want to think about two mechanics bays. If, if the town ever gets to this point where you could, yeah. Right. Interrupt you for a minute. Yeah. You need to think about two yeah. mechanics bays. Yeah. If this isn't, so yep. I want to keep it in each department. So if you think that you may need two mechanic bays, yeah. that's what I want you to do. This okay. is exactly yep. what I don't want. It's not up to us to decide what your department needs. Yeah. You need you need to come forward with <coughs> what what you need and what you would, yeah. uh, what you feel that you may need in the. In the yeah. The only direction, only reason I was coming to that point was. We don't service the town's equipment. 
yeah. you know, like right now, but if that ever became the theory of the town, then we could, um, then we, you know, definitely would need to. And that's yeah, I absolutely, yeah, sure I agree. Each department yeah. focused on, yep. this is what you guys, what we, you know best of what you need. Yep. Um, and I want to put together a good plan to propose to the town. And if we do it properly and uh, logically, then you have a good chance of success uh, is what I'm getting at. Um, yep, so again, just the quick quick issues that we have, which everyone knows, again, our break room is our boiler room. Matt has had the pleasure of sitting in it uh, recently. Um, so is that a pleasure? I don't know if it's a pleasure. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, you know, the MS4 requirements, we need a wash bay. We can't be washing outside. We want to save the trucks as long as we can keep them. That's how we've always done it. We want to, yeah. so we need to wash them off. The guys are doing it this morning. They're washing off all the trucks, getting the salt off them, trying to make them last. So if we don't have that wash bay, and we, we're actually breaking the rules for the MS4 because we're washing them outside right now, but that wash bay would do, you know. We're would, not only washing them outside, but I observed them, sorry to interrupt that's you, right. but um, <laughs> when I stopped by to uh, see the uh, truck and the trailer when, when they came in, John was out working on the Santa um, because you had some issues with it. When I went to leave, you had personnel up on top, oh, yeah. standing up on top of the Sandy unit, pressure washing them. Yeah. Well, if you're close to freezing, one of those hey, guys are going to take a header. Exactly, that. correct. And that's in, in one of my notes on here. The slips, trips, falls, you know, during, yeah. we wash them after every storm. So, you know, it, it, all it is is ice, you know, and we don't want that either. Then you have one of my, like I said, I have books. You know, again, it's because we're ahead of the game with everything we've done. You know, pressure washing systems to um, staging areas around the pressure washing. You know, how they have the the, the flat like um, platforms. Catwalks. Yeah, catwalks. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know how you so you'd actually be safe with a railing. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, some of this quick thing again. MS4 requires our sand to be in, stored inside. Even though we have it outside right now, we were supposed to have the sand inside, so we need a sand shed or similar to our salt shed. Um, a tight tank for the wash bay, ventilation system for our welding cutting, but also for our trucks. Um, that's that. So just going quickly through, you know, you want us to look to the 30 year mark, and some of the notes that I did make was. Uh, our, our current equipment should be 22,952 for square footage. That's what they're telling me. I, you know, I'm 30 year projection. I looked at different populations. I was trying to figure out like who, where are we going to be in 30 years? Am I going to be at like Hopkinton at 16,000, which is a kind of where I went. We, we have more miles of roads, but they're kind of, you know, closer than that. So, you know, they went up, they just built the building in 2016 and this was 38,100 square feet. So I, again, they have two street sweepers, they have um, two brush cutters. So that's that's basically what we were looking at. Again, where are we gonna be? Um, uh, additional, like I said, if we have to add more manpower down the road, we're gonna need more space. Not an additional wash bay, I'd say two, not one. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to go through quickly through the notes so we don't bug everybody and don't, else. And don't feel like you're rushed because I, I was beating up Kelly. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah. um, this is the whole thing, is just to, to get the basic what, information out there. What services do you hire out now? Things that the highway department does every year but your staff does. Brush cutting is out, every high is out. Um, street sweeping, we rent the sweeper but we provide an operator. And we get that at a bargain price. I don't know for how much longer, <clears throat> but we rent the sweeper. Um, the detention pond brush cutting as well, that that gets hired out. We you have enough money to do two ponds a year. That has to be done per, per the MS4 requirements. Um, clean our own catch basin. Yep. The grinding and getting rid of the brush piles, we hire that out but I'm, I'm hoping that's gonna die down once we take care of all these dead trees, it'll be much less, you know, but we still got years to go for that. Um, There's no else? mechanic right now, so you're subbing all that out. Right? Yeah, the, the mechanic, most, I do a lot of stuff myself because I'm mechanically inclined, but I just only have so much time. But 
the big stuff gets out to the and to the uh, either Hickey Fleet or Jared's Auto or Tri-State Truck or Springley Builders. He does great generator work too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you change the water pump and when you're in a pinch. Yeah. You're burying a lot of the cost. Yeah. Sure. Right. Oh yes, no doubt about yeah, it. To the rest of the town, they don't. They don't know. Fully nope. appreciate even. No. Nope. Last week uh, we have a trailer that we use to work on our sanders. Mike walked in when we were... I tried to get him to repurpose it, but he wouldn't. <laughs> so, so we built, there was an old military trailer in the back that we took and built into a new trailer so we can work on our, take our sanders off, put it on so we can gain access underneath. But I mean, that's just how I've always done things, you know. But you're right, Some a lot of the cost is being buried because uh, I put a set of air tanks in one of our trucks last week. That would have been a $2,500 job in the garage, we paid twelve hundred for the tanks, and we did the work ourselves. But uh, we yes. also benefited from Mike Kinio, who doesn't charge us a lot of money. Back. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and well, big shot with him. unfortunately, he's not available right now, and Mike's getting a little bit older, and it's harder for him to get around. So, yeah. So that's costs were buried for a long time. <coughs> One quick question. Uh, you said a building with two doors on it, so I'm just assuming that you're, you're talking about a long, narrow building. Correct. What's the width, width of that? So I don't have and that. And this is for Matt yeah. Benoit's benefit yep. because that's where he comes into play just so Correct. for uh, space utilization. Yeah, that's so that was discussion that we're still in that process of discussion because we, our discussion was whether the plows are going to be inside, then that's what John and I were still working on, mm -hmm. plows stored inside versus under an overhang. Like I saw in Charlton, Charlton had an overhang and their plows went under the overhang. Didn't go inside until like the night before. If they could put them on before the storm, they did. Um, it'd be nice to keep the plows inside and then the sanders stay outside on a rack. For, you know, So there's just odds and ends we have to clean up on our end yeah. of what we want. Um, we did, and just one quick thing that I did miss. So this Winston and Sampson report um, talked about Total acreage for like what you should plan on for this 22,952 square feet is 3.3 acres. Just, you know, that's something. I know Matt's got the same. Again, to the same comment that, that I made yeah. to um, Kelly, 3.3 acres could be a yeah. long, narrow strip. Yeah, so exactly. You, you need to know what your physical yeah. space would be. That That's where Matt will be able to help you quite a bit mm -hmm. with that. So um, just to quickly go through the community development and its outside supporting vendors, the impact of economic and residential development on call volume, service level demands in the, on the three departments. So of course with us it's more roads slash developments, industrial parks accepted by the town equals more MS4 requirements. So our zone is narrowed down, it also, it's by population and, um, and like, um, I'm trying to think drainage areas, stuff like that. But the more we add to it, the bigger our zone gets. So the more work we end up putting in, the whole area will expand, not just that one little spot. It expands the whole area. So that increases a lot of demand on us that we have to get done every year. Um, more catch basins to clean, more drainages to maintain, uh, more retention ponds, BMPs they call them, uh, to clean or make sure they're brush cut. Uh, like uh, more roads to sand and plow, and uh, more roads to maintain with paving, crack sealing, and if they had, it's a development residential, it's more sidewalks. Most of them have sidewalks, so that we have to maintain. So basically, that's where we're at. Like I said, we did a lot of homework with these other other buildings, and it actually was a wealth of knowledge because we weren't even close to where we are right now. Back then, you know, we were just trying to figure out, you know, find our path and, and they've helped us out a lot. I'm like, what worked, what didn't work? I love, that was the best question I could ask. You know, and guys would say, hey, I hated the fact that we did this. You know, or we forgot the air conditioner to the IT room. You know, that, you know, that stuff that you just over, you don't think of. One guy was like, these doors are awful. They, when the wind blows, they just shatter, they shake the whole time, you know. That's all you can hear. Make sure you get a weather strip on them. And so we got a lot of little notes to go with. So I'm hoping this will help out, but that's basically where I'm at. And anyone we talk to are more than willing to come talk to a committee, yep. you know, to let them, let us know what they went through, that what was good and bad, and willing to come in and talk if we ever wanted to. That be maybe more beneficial for um, building and facilities and potentially capital mm -hmm. than this committee. 
Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huh. But interestingly enough, the city of Woonsocket and the town of Kevin and the town of Douglas all have the exact same violent rules. Huh. You have the same number of plows. So Woonsocket has the same number of plow zones as you, the same number of trucks. They don't run, they don't have floors necessarily. The <laughs> <laughs> but that's what that they are working with the people. But at what point do you reach the point where you can't get your zone done in a lot of time? Okay. Okay. At what point are you going to have to add another that's right. zone? No, yeah. no we're we're close in some areas. We we I have color, I get maps from the building department, and I color code them legit with my you know, and I take mileage off of each one, and I have it broken down by mileage to see like I, I'm trying to make sure this is you know everyone's even, so we all finish the same time, and so I'll sit there and color code it all, and you look and you're like wow he's doing a lot of roads he you know he's so then when the next development like a white and heights comes in, then I'm gonna take off this section here and add it to somebody else or we've got to make another route and hire someone else or get another one of our guys to go in and plow this. And same what's going to happen if they go through that development off of Burke Street, which is going to be Duval Road. You know, we're going to have to dedicate a guy out that way more than what we have right now. So we try to keep it, you always plan for the big storm. Because, on, yes, the little storm we can be done plowing in three hours, four hours. That's why we have like a four hour minimum with our plow guys, because if we're doing one round, you're done in four hours, go home. So anything over three hours, and then they're getting too far behind, we need to start adding another truck. You know, that's kind of how we figure. You know, the minute the last flake is done, you can set your watch to seven hours and we're gonna be done because we're gonna plow for four more hours and then sand the town for three hours. And you know, that's kind of, uh, the base we go off of and then if it turns into more than that because we're growing more roads then we're going to have to add more trucks you know so that's kind of and that's how you you need to think moving forward so you're planning for, for that mm -hmm. next 20 to 30 year period yeah, we have a hunch how many subdivisions we have so um, yeah. Yeah. more new ones in the pipeline huh. subdivision at what rate of snowfall do you think we start to lose the battle an inch an hour? Or? Uh, no, a little, probably a little more than that. We start to lose the battle. You know, it starts with the smaller trucks, and then yeah, then and the, big, and the bigger trucks can keep up a little more. But most of our subcontractors are we've got a nine foot plow, and then you know if we start getting a foot of snow, you can't quite move that foot of snow back with that nine footer. So at the end, we break our six big trucks into four, uh, six sections, and we have to push back for them. But we're not going to find that many subcontractors with 11-foot plows willing to, I mean, you know that you see the signs everywhere at this point, you know, to, to push back for us. And a lot of times at that point, you're at a 20 or 25-hour storm. You need to sleep anyway, and then we'll push back the next day, which we, we tend to do as well. That's why the sidewalks sometimes don't get done till the next day, but safety for the guys are more important than the sidewalks at that point. And I always let the school know, Sidewalks, the roads will be good, but the sidewalks won't be done for tomorrow, but we'll get them done tomorrow at some point, but the guy's got to get some rest. You know, there's not a second shift coming in for our guys. You know, we're, we're there for the duration. That's just what it is. You know, we're not the city of Worcester where, well, even they're struggling, but they have another shift come in, you know. Sir? Yeah, you guys are all set? I am. Yeah, good, absolutely. Uh, through the chair, DA. Um, question regarding the 30 year anticipated uh, growth of the highway department and the population probably incoming from several businesses and new subdivisions and stuff. Would you anticipate that they, there's consideration to become a deep? Yeah, I mean. uh, you asked the damnedest questions, man. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> You hide them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conversation that needs to be had at some point. Yeah, I'm just thinking as anticipating for, for such a thing, that should be considered as part of this expansion project also. So uh, I can see probably in half that time, us, it was at a 10,000 population threshold where you can even consider a DPW. Or something. I'm not sure. I think it can be so, smaller you by yeah, boat. Yeah. But, but I just enlist. Listening to some of the equipment you have and the needs you have, I can already tell you that you have more equipment, or at least anticipated needs for more equipment than the DPW in Auburn. 
So, and there's a 16, 17,000 population down right there. So, um, you see things trending in that direction. So, I just wanted to point that out. Now, these guys are more tied to the physical realities of the town than anyone sure. else. Sure. So, those BMP, that that's going to get expensive. I think mm -hmm. we're we're really skating yeah. with the deal right now with a guy who will go out and cut the brush on the sure. side of the street yeah. for a ridiculously low rate. Yeah. yeah. But then we see what the other bidders put in. Yeah. How much would it cost? We're one big breakdown away and him going out of business away from costing us a ton of money. You know, because I believe once his tractor breaks down, he's retiring. It's just that's he's. That's it. just how my feeling. We have to sneak into his yard at night. Do all the PMs for him, so the yeah. thing keeps running. Yeah. But seriously, that it's like a huge gap. I forget exactly how much of a difference. Oh, it was a couple hundred dollars an hour more. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was three and change, and we paid one ten per hour for the brush guard. Yeah. It's almost actually getting a lot of calls uh, about developing lots in some of these private roads. I know you guys have to plow those for access. And right now, there's some that don't have houses on them, but once those are built, but that gets added to the plow list. The four subdivisions coming in, one of them is pretty large. Um, one of them is Thomas Circle, which is actually coming back to life. And then they're just going to add detention basins to each of these sidewalks on each one side of the road. So if you can anticipate that sort of growth over 30 years, it's just seen more need for equipment. So yeah. But um, do we, uh, again, another question through the chair to Highway. Do you guys have any volunteer program for plowing if you guys hit capacity as heard way where you get other folks to? lend their own vehicles to help plow. So they said a program like that. I've seen that in other towns where really? they at least open that out. So I don't know how that insurance would work. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, that's, there's, that's, that's it turns into a poop show. Yeah. yeah. And they've done that. Yeah, okay. It's scary. Especially when you take out a wall, a 300-year-old stone wall next to the ocean. Yeah. You're a volunteer. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, yeah, I was curious. <laughs> okay. So uh, you guys are all set? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mark? I'm going to defer to the chief way okay. of the list Yep. So we're in the same position as everybody else. We're running out of room. We went to where we are now in 93. They went from two rooms over the post office into the down downstairs in 93. In 96, when I started, we had eight full-time officers at that time. Right now we have 15, so we almost doubled. When I first got there, everybody in the, we had the officer's room done. Everybody in there had their own individual desk. We had plenty of room in that room itself. We've made changes over the years, so now there's, we, you know, we changed it around. We basically have two workstations because there's just not a room, enough room for everybody to have their desk. Locker room, we've outgrown that. Our 911 equipment is in a closet. Our IT stuff is in a closet. Our dispatch is not set up appropriately um, with all the accreditation guidelines. We were able to get some waivers because of our building to get past that. Um, but right now we're at 15 personnel. I, I, I would like to be at 17, especially with the way that they're changing the use of reserve officers. We're not going to have reserve officers anymore uh, that are able to work part time. Ideally for us, I think we should be at 17. Um, and that's just now not we're not talking about the near future add two officers you're looking at adding another car to the fleet um, we estimate right now we have between 5700 and 6000 square feet um, Sutton who was very similar to us the their new station that they built was 14000 square feet and uh, Mark and I estimate that we need at least to improve for the near future, 12,000 to 16,000 square feet. Sutton's was 14,000, and I think they were a little, they're a 15 man department, just like us. They were a little bit smaller than we are now from where they went yep. to, to what they have now. Yep. And they just did theirs, and again, we've talked to them. There's, we can learn a lot from what they did. Um, they have a beautiful facility at 14,000 square feet, so we gotta be yep. in, in there somewhere. And, and on the same thing that I was saying to uh, Kelly, that's fine with the gross area, but it, it doesn't mean anything right? Uh, to me anyways. Yep. Um, it would come down, you need to figure out what you need for office space, uh, right. uh, locker rooms and restrooms and uh, your vehicle storage and, and whatnot. Um, the, I keep hearing the uh, term Sally Port. That must be where you bring the yeah, yeah. Prison, prisoners yeah. into or whatever when you arrest somebody. Um, 
yeah, whatever that stuff is called. Um, <laughs> but that's that's what we need for information right. um, to move forward. And we so. we will put all that together. Yep. We'll have yep. it all uh, down. Um, the one concern that I had, and, and I spoke to Matt about this before, is you, we talk about hidden costs. We know what our, our town budget goes up every year. It's good, it, what, $300,000 you have to play with? Mm -hmm. to, right, I, where I'm at right now, Adam takes care of the oil, takes care of the electric. Right. So in a, when you put us in a new building, my, budget, my operational budget is going to increase. Right, and that, and that's what you're gonna need to. Um, and fire is gonna have to do the same thing, and if, if highway has it, they're gonna have to do the same thing. Um, well, they do have it because John's already expressed uh, different savings that that people don't even realize what's going on. Um, those are important things to be presented, so people understand. Uh, if John is putting air tanks on a truck, that would, and we're doing it at. Uh, Twelve hundred dollars for the materials, and it, it cost them three three man hours to put it on. For argument's sake, I'm sure it's more mm -hmm. than three, but three man hours to put it on versus subbing it out to a uh, to a vendor. Uh, not only is, is it going to be twenty five hundred dollars, so it's thirteen hundred dollars for the labor cost of it. It's also the the turnaround time for him to get that piece of equipment back. So. $2,500 is great if they can get it back to us by noontime, right. but if they're going to have it for a week because they can't fit it in, that $2,500 means nothing to them anymore because now he's screwed. He's down, he's down a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, get, and getting back yeah, we to know it. Yeah, we know the areas that we need to focus on. A lot of it is, uh, a lot of our stuff is IT. Yeah. A lot of our stuff is office space, records area, everything that we have, we have almost everything that we need right now downstairs, we just don't have enough room. So we have to figure out exactly what square footage we need. Right. Maybe add a few things, expand on a few things. Like yep. we have one Sally Port, one garage. We have two ATVs in our garage with all our winter tires. So <laughs> the garage isn't really accessible. We got right. one entrance where we can bring in prisoners. So we know we need to improve that. Um, and we'll have that all spec'd out. Yep. The, um, and, and you brought up the IT stuff, it, it would probably be helpful for you to reach out to the, um, who's that, David? Dave. That we yeah. have. Um, so you, you make sure you have enough physical space for that equipment to, right. uh, for cooling purposes and whatever else is involved in that stuff. I can build houses, I can computer yeah. stuff I'm all set on. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, for these guys, their connectivity, their ability to run 24 seven regardless of condition, that's really important. Mm -hmm. And we can't have you sistered onto our stuff, or it needs to run on its own. <clears throat> it might be good to have your some part of what you do help us restart, but that's the like power that's not mm -hmm. computing. But uh, it's a real concern. It needs to be in a conditioned space. It needs to be physically secure. Um, the electrical engineer had a chuckle when we walked into our IT space. And yeah. Remotely close to. No, even when the you 911 the people, the, the, the 911 <laughs> people come, they have to turn sideways to walk into the closet, and right. Adam's constantly ventilating, changing the fan, doing something. Uh, the, the the equipment overheats. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our generator. The we're talking about putting another panel in, and the back room floods. Yeah, the, well, we haven't even touched on that, but and you get cool. heavy rains. The, the the sewer backs up. The drain can't take the water. We have heavy, heavy rains. Yeah, our lobby will flood. Um, I put their records up on pallets. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. It, I put them on pallets because it just, you get a couple inches of, you know, a couple inches of rain. You get water that comes in around where the old loop event was and stuff and the foundation. Yeah. So. I've had a lot of questions. Can I ask a couple? Absolutely. How does your evidence handling compare to Peter? Our evidence room is just way too small. Um, I mean, we're just talking about officer has collected evidence in the field comes in, chain of custody. Yep. Bellingham, he's got a lazy Susan, he's tagging it, turning the door, and lazy Susan is locked back. Yep. The chain of custody is never broken, the evidence in the secure room. Are we able to we got, observe the scene? Kind we of have a, a slot, we have a, a slot in our door, and we have 
temporary evidence lockers where it goes into a locker and then the key, if, it, if it's something big that you can't get into the evidence room when he's not there, it gets secured in the temporary locker and that only key to that locker goes into the evidence room so there's no access to it. So Aaron is the evidence officer. He's got a good system set up, but that in and of itself is a perfect question because the whole thing needs to be revamped. Yeah, so is it antiquated compared to your peers? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Almost, and almost everything is. Like our IT room, our, like our dispatch. We went from, literally over the past 20 years, we went from a desk with a computer on it in dispatch. That's what dispatch was. It was a, a desk with a computer on it. And then, you know, we finally, we used the 911 grant to get an actual dispatch console. Right, we changed it around. We turned the computers around because the sea just can't be exposed. To, you know that whole room dispatch should be its own private room. And if an officer is going to go in there for a reason, it should be key fobbed, and, and then you go in. It should be a secured room. Same thing with our IT. Same thing with our 911. Evidence is obvi obviously a big thing. Um, if you, if a situation called for two people to be working on dispatch, would you be able to do it for a sustained period of time? Not for the immediate emergency for an hour or two, but we had a day long thing and we just had, we were running, running, running with all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Could you safely? It would be tight. It would be tight. We could, we could get away with it for a, a day or two with the, with the PSAP, but there's, you know, space-wise, space -wise, computer-wise, one chair that goes between them. The, the our audio video for our um, interview room system is over there. That's where they make the DVD. It's tight, extremely tight. Are there any times when you feel like you need more than one position? So, police officers in the field doing running a whole bunch of information through dispatch, then these guys get a call. They have been. Numerous times where we lost, call the second so. dispatcher in. Yes. We've had numerous times where we would call somebody in, or the dispatcher is listening on the road, and Mark has done it before himself, listening on the scanner. It's hitting the fan, and the dispatcher, the dispatcher on duty, doesn't have time to make that call to have somebody come in. Hannah's done it before, and they would come in because they know that the dispatcher is so tied up. They would come in on their own. Um, so it does happen. I mean, it's it's limited where the one person can't handle it. But and we'll put extra for big events. We'll put anything anticipated. We'll try and put another person on storms, storm coverage, Oktoberfest, things like that. We'll always have try and put extra people on. Oh, yeah. It's tight working. To answer your question, it's it's tight with two in there. Do you farm out all of your? Maintenance and repairs tools. Yes. Is there any one really common set of repairs for annual maintenance? Obviously, there are a lot of changes. I'll give you an example where I'm going with it. So, Chief Blakey and Timberton decided I'm just going to get my own machine for front end alignment because I have to do so many of them. And we hired a mechanic that almost did nothing else except front end alignment mm -hmm. and police cruisers when he wasn't working in the buildings yet. Two hats he wore. But is that the kind of thing that we see, that we're constantly just chasing one kind of repair, or is it just all over the map? Um, we're pretty fortunate with the guy that we have, who Steve Beck does all our work. He keeps everything scheduled and maintained when he does, he does the tires twice a year for us. He calls us and tells us when the car is due for an oil change because he keeps the records on the mileage. So the routine maintenance is solid. He does it, he does the brake jobs when they need to be done. And again, he does that by the mileage. He looks at it every time he changes the oil. He pulls the tires, checks the drums, checks the rotors. So he stays on top of it. And any major work for us, it's usually covered by warranty until they get over 100,000 miles. And now that MHQ is right down in Webster, like a few of the cars, the water pumps started going. It, it's just, they start going right around the same time. But that's we warranty water work. Pump expert right over there. So Steve, <laughs> Steve checks it. If the check engine light comes on, we'll, we'll run it down there. Steve will throw it on the computer. He's like, yeah, it's this. He goes, but if you take the MHQ, it'll be under warranty. They'll warranty work it. 
So we have a pretty good system, especially with MHQ being right in Webster now. Uh, they do all their uh, maintenance work there. So that's worked good. But the things with those cars, they, when something goes, they all, it, the part seems to go right around the same mileage. So and most of it is covered by warranty because we do the cars the way we do them. But so it um, sounds like it's routine maintenance stuff that they're doing. So what would be interesting to, uh, to help answer that question would be, what is our labor cost? that we're through gene, not not parts, labor costs, mm -hmm. as to what it's costing us to um, maintain maintain those vehicles, because it, it could be a situation where all three departments run their ma uh, regular maintenance on the smallest, I'm not saying the, one of your uh, giant trucks, um, it might be a little over the, the average mechanic, but the, the one tons and um, the, the smaller equipment, the, mm -hmm. even the uh, whether it's the ATVs or UTVs, whatever you're calling them, generators, things like that, it may be beneficial to us to have somebody in house for that stuff. So. Not one in each department, but maybe. Right. And, and we did try that. That was our goal when we put the lift in the highway garage. Just um, <clears throat> we couldn't be competitive enough with the salary requirements at the time. So that's why. Uh, but I, I think um, that the labor rate somewhere around 65 and 85 an hour for what you're subbing out on that maintenance now. So you may be a little in a little better position that you could be competitive for that labor rate. Right? Like already oh, broke his. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> you have anything to add, Mark? Yeah. No, just space. I think it's a good a good starting point. Do you have anything you want to add to this thought process, Matt? Yeah, it's just some things that I want to consider at least for next meeting or something that I'd like to do in the meantime. Just I kind of want to set up my own little tours with each facility so I can yep. put my eyes on this space. Um, I know you mentioned bringing up financials to put me in timeout, but it seems to have come up. You'll already. be in timeout again. <laughs> Again, but that's all right. You got two guys that are going to attack. Oh, me too. No, I, I, I understand that. But um, I, this might be a little premature, but it's something I'd like to get in advance is um, response time data, and if um, just you know, average data for responses for emergency services and stuff. I just want to at least put that out there that I would need that information at some point. And. If there's any sort of uh, condition reports on things, I think you mentioned when you guys have a roof at the fire department, that's a problem. I don't know if that's ever been assessed for a, a value or anything like that. That's anything, yeah, well, anything that, in writing that's condition reports. Kind of that's see already been approved to, uh, to okay. replace the roof and why it's okay. on hold right now. Um, now, I don't know if the uh, police chief is, uh, knows this yet, okay. but I reached out to George and I asked him, um, I said, just tell me any morning, I don't care, just tell me the day before, I'll meet you over at the fire department. Um, I want to do it as the sun's coming up or before so we can see where our heat loss is. You don't have to change the heat settings or nothing, but his particular drone will pinpoint the temperatures on the different things and then we can get a good map uh, for where our heat loss is, and that'll help you guys as we go forward before we do the roof, and we're evaluating uh, the space needs that you guys have. I want to make sure that we're not doing something that we're going to be redoing a year down the road. Right. So That's part of why we want yep. to see those numbers. Yep. Uh, that's going to factor into that decision. Their roof needs to be replaced. They they have a couple tabs that fell off. Okay. Um, Okay. It's not leaking as of yet that I know of. I know we have had some okay. ice dam problems in the past, but I, I don't believe that it's leaking right now. Okay. So things like that, you know, improvement estimates, if there was anything that you got a price on and you didn't decide to pursue, which is things to consider. Um, I should probably say that we went through this entire process in Auburn because the police and fire were looking to try to have a conjoined facility. <laughs> but ultimately, uh, it came down to several variables, including especially response time. Emergency vehicles was huge. But um, uh, you had to look at improvement of existing and then what it would cost to build a new one. So I might be getting ahead of myself with the next thing, but I kind of want to get at least an individual response from each department as to uh, if there's areas in town that you're looking to consider for 
possibilities. Uh, I, can, I can help you out with that. Yeah, yeah. I asked so, this question right, right at the beginning. Is I went right. the all three of them and asked them where they would like to be. Yeah, I'd like to have that. They all like so. to be in the same exact spot. Okay. Uh, right. In the center of town, which they consider the center of the town being where the fire and highway is. Okay. Because logistically, it helps them for navigating around. Understood. Um, so just to help you mm. with your thought process, mm. and, and, and uh, the fire chief and I have had this conversation, is Dunkin' Donuts or the Family Fuels, whatever you want to call it, across the street has plans of relocating. You've seen that on the planning board. Yeah, they'll be there in January. That's their heliport. Mm -hmm. That's going to go away. So mm -hmm. now they have to think about <clears throat> what are they going to do for life light now? Sure. Where's that going to go? That's so a that's a consideration. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Chief told me that um, they did do some measurements and feel that they can land in front of the fire department, but them maybe a, a challenge at certain times so it's something that we want to consider mm -hmm. um, that's the general sense i mean yep. i'm going to be collecting a lot of data mm -hmm. so. you there's, can, uh, that, there's also your build out so mm -hmm. you know physically you wouldn't be able to put these two guys mm -hmm. where the fire department is it just won't work you don't have enough space. There's just not enough. There. Yeah. Even the okay. the suit that needs today, it wouldn't fit. Never mind a build out. And we don't want to be in a position where we say we could fit in there. Yeah. In 20 years or 10 years or five years, they need they need another truck, and he needs six more cruises or, sure. or whatever the case may be. What we, we can't abandon that. Sure. Well, nice all of that. us in this room will be lynched. So. Yeah. Um, no, I understand. Uh, it's just. Having the numerical numbers to back it up obviously works for the municipality. Yep. So I just got to run those numbers anyway. Mm -hmm. so. You have a copy of this report. What well, is the thing? That's what that Weston and Sampson gave me. They ran a whole Probably. computer thing for the that's highway. No, what a, yeah, it worked out really well. I was well. thinking the mobile Thank pipeline. You. What's that land? Is there any usable land in that area? Yeah, so what I what I don't want, there's usable land there to answer your, your, short, your short question. I don't want. And everybody can disagree and we could go in a different direction. I personally do not want to focus on the areas initially. I want to focus on what our needs are for space. Sure. Agreed. And then the evaluation can move forward from that point. And that's why I, I asked for Matt Benoit to be um, included in, in this discussion because he's going to help. He has no vested interest with anybody here. So he's just going to look at the space and say, you can do X here or not. Just like he just said, what about the mobile pipeline? Because he's he's been removed from this whole conversation, so he's got a fresh way of thinking about it. Does that, you know, do that overlapping, you know, your Venn diagram, right? So there are needs. If you need three-phase power, you can't be anywhere in town. You have to be with this three-phase power. Mm -hmm or where it could be extended for a reasonable cost. If you need to connect to town sewer instead of having it out back, then you can only be where town sewer is. And then you have the other circle that you want to overlap that is your response time circle. Mm -hmm. So you, your ideal location is going to be where you can maintain your response times and have all the utility connections that you need to without need to build up. That's going to make it a fairly narrow range of choices. Right? And along with that, over the last uh, few years, we've done quite a f quite a big investment into the town. Whether whether it's into um, the fire department, what we're going to do for the upgrades for the electrical and stuff like that, the uh, radio system that we're going to do, that and that's a pretty hefty thing. What we don't want to do is say, okay, we just ran all this fiber optic down here, so now we're going to be over on Mumford Road. <laughs> that's not going to work. We have to we have to think in what we we're, we're working on and make sure it all is uh, gels together and it, it, it's logical. Sure. Otherwise, we're going to have no credibility in you, and this will not go forward. Because yeah. all these questions are going to come out of the woodwork when people start at, you know, start paying attention and asking these questions. So you have to be educated and have a, a good response to the questions that are going to be asked. Is there going to be a lot of new equipment?
change like in the police department fire station or with this with the radio upgrades is it going to be added equipment or is it going to be similar size i mean are they going to need more space i, I don't just we're think. getting a whole new rack yeah yep. inside that little room inside the door so you're going to put the rack the, on the wall. oh more stuff yeah that's all i was just trying to figure out yeah. we're keeping a lot of our cross band capability for the time being that equipment was purchased and still within its useful life. Yeah. So we're not really going to save any space. Yeah. Um, no, I'm yeah, thinking it's going to limit up more space. It's going to take up more space. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If we do this responsibly, we'll have power backup. Yeah. So not, I'm not talking about generator power, but yeah. at least the APS. Yeah. And uh, surge suppression and a whole bunch of things that we've so yeah, done gonna, in the past. You know, like, a lot. A lot more equipment than what's in there now, basically, right? You're gonna have to. I know the. I know what the fire station's talking about. I know the police department. That's why I'm saying I know they're both little closets. That's all they are. The real, you know, the tough thing is that you have to air condition that space. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. That can be a challenge. You can't just be buried in the middle of the building. Exactly. The <laughs> yep. in the boiler room. Yeah. <laughs> That, that AC has to be on standby. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't do a whole building yeah. generator, yeah. you're just using a limited number of connections for standby power. That exactly. AC has to be on. Yeah. So it basically has to be either its own zone or mm. its own unit. Most times, like even this one's its own zone, its own little unit. It's its own unit. Yeah, it has to be. It runs all year round. So. I just have a question for Matt. Um, are you able to give us, like, in terms of the actual space of the plot of land, like the fire station is on, um, just for the purposes of designing what an ideal configuration might be for us, theoretically, if we add it onto our building, that would be helpful to know because if we don't have the land to physically put that proposed theoretical idea on, it's kind of an exercise in futility to, to draw it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying, and I can appreci appreciate that. What what I'm trying to help the three departments with is not spend your time on trying to design a building. It is more spend spend your time on, you know, on identifying what your needs are, and he can easily give you that information, and please forward it to her. Um, but that's going to bog down your, your thought process is, is all I'm getting at. Is, is I'm not saying that you don't have the capabilities or, or any of that stuff. If you want to do it, have at it. I thought that's you, what you had asked for, though. No, I want, I want what your space needs are. So I have a truck that takes up a 12 by 35 bay. I have a, and then I'm going to need three of those bays. And I need four bunk rooms. And I need um, three bathrooms and I need a meeting room that's going to be able to hold 100 people. Uh, so you don't like care that. how it's configured? Just that we you, you shouldn't care how it's configured either, initially. Not yet. Not yet. Initially. I'm not saying you're not going to you're not going to I'm not saying you're not going to have input into your own design. I understand now, it's deeper yep. into the process, but you talked about, all right, I need so many garage bay doors. Right. That to me talks about design. Whereas oh, to me that yeah, wasn't because, the objective. Because you're thinking past what, I, what I'm asking. So just tell me that you, you could say I need four, ba four bays and one could go in here, one could come in here, one could come in here, one could come in here, or all four could come in this way. That's not your concern. Your, your concern is what, you, what you need, right? Mm -hmm. And then once we identify that and you start talking about design and space utilization of the lot, you gotta think about the flow of your of your trucks or your emergency vehicles when they leave. And the emergency comes up, do we wanna be driving out the back of the building and around or do they all come out the front? Do they go out the left hand side? It's the flow of the land on, to get out into the traffic. Do you need a blinking light that's out there that like they have in Northbridge that would come on and stop traffic so you can safely get out there. If if these guys ended up um, on uh, what's that Gleason Court and the old grammar school, they would definitely need a light because they would never get down the street. Um, so I want to just concentrate on what your actual space requirements are for each thing that you want to store, what, whether it's a shovel or a ladder truck. What your space you fair enough. 
what your yep. space is going to be and what your needs for personnel. Um, that's just the baseline. That's to start with. And then the conversations are going to come in about the uh, what the growth of the town is going to be and what you may need. All right, we're, we're going to there's an over 55 community that's going to, that's coming through the planning department and you're going to have 100 units in there. That's potentially 200 people that are over 55 and it could be another 50 uh, calls situation either. where you're going down West Street or you're going down North Street um, on, a, on a regular basis from what I hear on your on the, uh, dispatch. So those are the things that, okay. that we can plan on for the future. So. I just don't want you bogged down with trying to figure out what the building's going to look like because that's premature. So the goal is basically to have everything under a roof. Yep, my goal my goal is you, 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 all you guys identify what your needs are, we put together a good plan and we present it and hopefully it works. Whether it's under one roof or not, that's totally up to your department on how you want to configure that. And I don't want to go forward and using the mentality that was that's been here forever. Don't say nothing. Just go, Adam. Go get me another roll of duct tape. I don't want to do that. I, I want to have a, a a good plan that's going to serve the town well, and that we can all hang our hat on and say that we did our job properly. It's a Christmas list. The wish list. You said it. Yes. You hide. <laughs> um, anybody else have anything that add to this? Um, anything that I missed, Matt, that you may have concerns with? Yeah, so, it's a long, deep, involved conversation. I think it's like feeling an onion. Mm -hmm. Today we just took the crunchy step off. Mm -hmm. We get into greater and greater depth as we go along. Mm -hmm. So I ask more, more specific questions. Mm -hmm. So, so. The feeling that I got going around that the, the, it is quite a bit, so I would like to entertain on our next meeting um, having uh, one department and then doing the same thing for the following two meetings. And I'm going to use for no other reason but the same method that I used the first time. We'll have fire on the next meeting, have highway on the second meeting, have police on the third meeting. Um, if I may, sir? You're not getting a meeting. I do not want to meet him. <laughs> I was just curious if we want to put highway first, since they already have this West New Samson breakdown. They've gone a long way down. It will help the other two departments. Yes. That's so okay. Tell Is everybody in agreement with that, to have highway go for us? Sure. sure. You're up. Okay. So um, what works for everybody for the uh, next meeting? I'll make myself available for whatever, so it's up to you guys as to how it works. I'd like to try to establish a regular schedule, like the third Wednesday morning of each month, something like that, or if you want to meet more frequently. You and I, it won't hurt us. It's up to these mm -hmm. three departments to tell us what works for them, as well as the town administrator, because he's... We have our standing meeting on Monday, so as long as we avoid that. Conflict. Yeah, so for Wednesday morning, it's a good foundation to build on. Yeah, Wednesday mornings is fine for me. Yeah, same here. Yeah. 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 Do we want to stay at uh, 9 o'clock, or we want to... Yeah, yeah 9 o'clock's fine. That yeah, one's good. We're meeting on the third Wednesday currently this month. The next one would be the 19th. I don't want to go, uh, I don't want to drag it out a month further. Okay. Does next, next Wednesday, does next Wednesday work for everybody? It's the 29th. No? Okay. Last two weeks. Yeah, I go for the fifth. The fifth. All right, yeah. fifth, that's fine. I just, we need to move this along. Yeah, sure. So I don't, I don't want to, because that would be three months before we even got the I do talk, have, uh, talk to the third department. The generator walkthroughs at 10 o'clock that morning, so it may tie in if you have it on my phone. So I'm assuming that's, I was told that at some point. Yeah. So, okay. So at 9 o'clock, we can go 9 to 10 and then 10 to 11. Doc, from Back to the Future will be so. <laughs> Will an hour give you enough time to discuss I think what you need to discuss? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I that's believe so. Okay. So that, that is going to be on. January what? Huh? Five. 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 I can't help it. I'm deaf. Five, nine a.m. and highway will be up. Um, 
only because of the way that I did the order, then the the following meeting will be fire, and then the third meeting will be the fifth. Yeah. If we can crank them all out each week in January, that'd be pretty great. Yeah. Um, Matt did uh, initiate a group thing that's on on the uh, SharePoint. You're going to do that if that's our data dump. if the stuff is uh, sent around. Do not start a back and forth question thing. It's a violation of the open meeting law. I don't want to do that. It's going to be for informational purposes only. Matt's going to share things to you. Um, and if you, I guess if you have a direct question for Matt, then just answer them. Otherwise, we'll keep it to the meeting. Very good. Sounds good. Fair enough. Thank you. Need All a right. motion to adjourn before everybody I'll runs move. away. Second. I have a motion and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.